got extreme lower abdominal pain. I'll take it from here, Carmen. Oh. How far along is she? Eight months, couple days. The accident happened on her way back home after dropping Lieutenant Steele of his squadron. Oh. The lieutenant is in the air, but he has been notified and ordered back to base. The blood pressure is dropping, Doctor. Pulse is very irregular. We got fetal distress here. Call the operating room and tell them to stand by for emergency surgery. I'm Lieutenant Steele. My Lieutenant, wife... Your wife has to go on for surgery. Oh, my God, the Step baby! Step aside, Lieutenant. Please, step aside. Michaels? Commander Michaels. Lieutenant, did you say something? Yes, the surgery. Can anyone tell me what's going on with my wife? Uh, of course. Uh, Dr. Pearson will brief you as soon as he gets back from OR. You can go down there and wait if you want. Great. Thanks, ma'am. Sergeant Major Hasey? Yeah. I'm Mark Gordon, station housing director. Well, this is Mrs. Sergeant Major, but she prefers to be called Annie. Hi. Hi, right, nice to meet you both. Didn't I just stop by to see if you found everything in order? Oh, everything's fine, Mr. Gordon. It's really a great house. We're looking forward to getting settled in. You know, you'd think after uh, 25 years in the Corps and all the moves, we'd have this down to a real science. But not us. We never packed the same way twice. Hey, come on, it's not my <laughs> fault. Talk to your son. He's the pack rat. Hey, Dad. Look at all these magazines on flying I found in the garage. I'm gonna put them in my room until I get a chance to get at them. I arrest my case, counselor. David, this is Mr. Gordon. Mr. Gordon, my son, David. Uh, call me Mark. Save that Mr. Stuff for somebody else. All right, sir. Uh, Mark? I'm afraid David's gonna have to get used to saying sir for quite some time, Mark. He's received an appointment to the Naval Academy. Says he wants to be a Marine pilot. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Thanks. That's not gonna stick these in my room. Boy, you know, when I was young, that's all I could think about, being a pilot, you know, racing across the sky. <laughs> just didn't work out for me. <laughs> well, I better be going. Nice meeting you both. If you need anything, just call me at the office. Well, I appreciate your coming by, Mark. Hey, my pleasure. You know how tough it is moving from one place to another. Yeah. You ever in the service, Mark? Oh, yeah, Marines for three years. Of course, that was quite a while ago. Listen, once we're finally settled in, I'd like it if you came for dinner. Hey, it'll be my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thanks again. All right. Lieutenant Steele? Yes, sir. Well, we were a little concerned at first, but the surgery went very well. And my wife, sir, is she? Your wife and your new baby girl are doing just fine, Lieutenant. Congratulations. I can't believe it. <laughs> a girl? Carrie will be in recovery for some time, but that baby ought to be in the nursery by now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. A little girl. My... Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Are, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. A, a little girl. <laughs> There's one excited Marine. <laughs> well, you'll have to forgive the lieutenant. He can't wait to see his new baby girl. Uh, you must be Commander Rogers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm Jonathan Smith. I'm the new psychologist who's taking Dr. Gleason's place while she's on maternity leave. Well, it's nice to meet you. This your first day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you'll like it here. You've got a real good staff. How long have you been here, Corinne? It's Matt, and I have been here 10 months, 23 days, 11 hours, and 15 minutes. Yeah, well, excuse me, Matt, but are you always that precise? <laughs> no, but I'm on my last tour of duty, and I find myself counting the days. You see, the government paid for my medical training, and in return, I'm giving them 20 years of service. It's a real good deal for them, and a real good deal for me, too. Commander Michaels. Oh, Commander Rogers, I heard the operation went very well. Yes, it did. Mother and child are doing just fine. But I think it'll be a while before Lieutenant Steele comes down out of the clouds. <laughs> oh, Jonathan, forgive me. 
I want you to meet the best nurse in the entire Navy, Commander Kimberly Michaels. Jonathan Smith, pleasure to meet you. Same here. Jonathan will be acting as staff psychologist till Dr. Gleason returns. Mr. Smith, you might talk to our chief surgeon here about his obvious delirium. I am really not the best nurse in the Navy. Okay, okay. The world, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, I've got to go. See you later. Take care. You too. Yeah, I get the impression you and, uh, and the commander there are good friends. Well, yeah, yeah I, <laughs> I guess you could say that. Yeah. She is an extraordinary woman. Served two tours as a combat nurse in Vietnam, so I wasn't kidding when I said she was the best, at least in my book. Yeah, two tours, that's a lot of combat. Yeah. She had any problems with her? No, well, she's never said anything about it. I really couldn't say one way or the other. Oh, I guess she has her good days and her bad days, but hey, don't we all? Hey, we certainly do. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me, Jonathan, I'd better uh, go change. The hospital CEO does like to see his chief of surgery in uniform once in a while. I'll see you around. Bye-bye. Tell you, Jonathan, you're gonna like the Hastings. They're real down to earth. <laughs> Get it? Down to earth. <laughs> That's really funny, Mark. Well, I just thought I'd inject a little angel humor into this conversation. Very little. Well, anyway, their son David uh, is going to the Naval Academy. Isn't that great? Hey, that's quite an honor. They must be very proud. Oh, are you kidding me? Travis was practically busting his buttons when he told me. Said David wants to be a Marine aviator. Boy, I tell you, when I was a kid, that's all I dreamt about, being a pilot. Really? Well, what happened? You just changed your mind? Nah. Well, actually, yes, you know, once I found out it was bad for me. Bad for you? I can flying be bad for you? I'm afraid of flying, okay? Okay, well, just say you're afraid of flying. Don't say it's bad for you. Oh, well, that's easy for you to say. You're an angel. You're used to flying all over the place. Well, not me. <laughs> so which one of the Hastings is our assignment? Uh, all of them. What's wrong with them? I don't know. And again, I don't know anything about Commander Michaels, either. Well, what do we do? Uh, just hang around and wait, see what happens. I hope he finds out something soon. But Colonel Mayen is not the easiest person in the world to work for. Oh, come on. You're just saying that because you don't like to take orders from a woman. I am not. She just happens to be a very tough lady who doesn't care very much for civilian. Well, you're just going to have to convince her otherwise. <laughs> Rather kiss a rattlesnake. It's not funny, Jonathan. Hey, but one of those days, huh? Rough morning, yeah. That combined with very little sleep. Well, I'm sure you get the picture. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. May I? Yeah. Thank you. So, are you getting acquainted with everything, Mr. Smith? It's Jonathan, and yeah, I've been feeling my way around pretty well. Well, it's... Yeah, I've been meaning to ask you why uh, a nurse of your rank is still working in the emergency room. I'm afraid I don't understand your question. 
Well, it's, it's just a little unusual to see a commander working in a hands-on capacity rather than supervising, that's all. Well, for your information, Jonathan, I'm in the ER because we happen to be understaffed, but also because I have quite an extensive background in trauma care. And most of what you learned in your two tours in Vietnam. Yes, that's right. Look, I know you saw a lot of death and tragedy when you were in Nam. I was just wondering if you had any problems. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Wait a second. I happen to know an awful lot about the veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, okay? So I don't need you or anyone else telling me that this is the reason you're feeling bad or this is why you can't do your work. Oh, I'm sorry if my question upset you, Commander. Just a habit I have. It comes with a job, I guess. Yeah, right. Well, enjoy your coffee, Mr. Smith. Hey, Mark. What's up, Travis? Boy, this is some kind of airplane, isn't it? It's America's best. Boy, to see it up close like this, it's awesome. I just think what it'd be like to fly one. <laughs> Can't even imagine. Hey, it won't be long till David will be able to tell us both. Yeah, that's for sure. So what brings you out here, Mark? Oh, the movers forgot to give you your household effects inventory. I've been looking everywhere for yeah, this. Yeah, I bet you have. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for bringing it by. Hey, no problem. I'd like to get out of that office as much as possible. I know what you mean. Pushing papers can be a real pain in the neck. Yeah, among other things. Hey, listen, Andy's been after me about having you over for dinner. That's no problem. Just tell me what day and I'll be there. How about tonight around 7? See you tonight around 7. OK. Hey, Mark, I've been meaning to ask you, does the name Hopalong Hastings mean anything to you? I belong Hastings. I haven't heard that name in, what, like 20 years. Then you must be Flash Gordon. How'd you know that? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hastings, are you related I'm to Ted's younger brother. You gotta be kidding. Not hardly. Mark, I've heard so much about Bubba's Bar and Grill. I almost stopped in LaPorte on our way out here. Well, I'll be. How's old Hopalong doing? Oh, he's doing great. Sergeant Major Hastings, report to maintenance control. Listen, Mark, I gotta run. We'll catch up on everything at dinner. And tonight, Mark, I'd like to hear what really happened. Hey, tonight, Flash Gordon will tell it all. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. Hi. I heard you were having a bad day, so I thought maybe a nice dinner would be just the thing to cheer you up. What is this? You've been talking to Mr. Smith, too? No, it's just that Dr. Pearson told me up in the lounge that you seem to be on everybody's case today. Yeah, well, I guess I'm pretty rough to be around today. So what's this with Jonathan? Uh, you have a little run-in with him, too? Kind of, but it was no big deal. All right, how about dinner? Antonio sound okay to you? I'm afraid I wouldn't be much company tonight, Matt. Let me be the judge of that. Listen, Commander, if you're smart, you will follow the doctor's order. Oh, my gosh, a smile. I do believe my patient is on the road to recovery. All right, but dinner at my place. I'd like that better. Excuse me. Commander Michaels? Yes, Lieutenant. Um, my wife wanted me to give this to you. Just a little thank you for being so nice to us. This is really thoughtful of you. Thank you, Lieutenant. Oh, it's my pleasure. I uh, hope you don't mind, but uh, we named the baby after you. Kimberly Aaron Steele. No, I don't mind at all. Well, I better be going. Looks to me like my patient is getting better by the moment. Yeah.
uh, here's to um, to cereal. Oh. Um, may it never get soggy. Matt, we have toasted everything from dog food to astrology. Our food is getting cold. Okay, okay. I <laughs> promise this will be the last one. <sighs> Here's to us. May all our children have wealthy parents. If you might not understand it, um, I mean, you seem to enjoy my company, and God knows we've had some pretty good times together, but the minute I start talking about us and the future, you shut me out. Oh, Matt, I'm sorry. If I could explain why I do the things I do, it would probably be a miracle. I really do enjoy the time we spend together. And I do consider you a very close friend. But I don't want the pressure of having to make a deeper commitment right now. At least not right now. Well, Commander, one of the things I always admired about you is your candor. I'm sorry, Matt. I don't know how else to say it. Am I really care for you and... I'm willing to accept whatever you feel comfortable giving. Okay. Okay. Here's to understanding. As difficult as it may be sometimes. Yeah, yeah, David, that just sounds great. Yeah. Oh, uh, look, David, can I get back to you on this? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, can't wait. Oh. I don't believe it. Yeah, David wants to take you flying. Huh? How'd you know? That's why I'm here, to make sure you go. What are you, nuts? Jonathan, you're gonna get me out of this. I can't get you out of this. It's part of the assignment. Jonathan, he... Look, Mark, it's very important that you get close to David. Can we be close on the ground? Why don't you take advantage of this? It'll help you get over your fear of flying. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. Gordon, please file these. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, ma'am. Oh, Colonel Mayne, this is my friend, Jonathan Smith. It's nice to meet you, Colonel. You're the new psychologist. Well, it's nice to meet you, too. Yeah, I've been working with Mark here, trying to get him past this phobia he has about flying. Oh, is that so? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was hoping to take him flying this afternoon. It fits all right with you, Colonel. Uh, listen, Colonel, we have this big inspection coming up. I probably should stick around, catch up on the filing. You thing. listen up, Gordon. In my book, a person's health comes first. You go on and take the afternoon off. But, Colonel... There are no buts, Gordon. You go ahead and beat this thing. And after you conquer that, then you and I are going to work on this. He's all yours, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Colonel. Welcome to the Friendly Skies. I think you're really gonna like my friend's plane because it's a really safe plane to fly. And, well, you'll see it. <laughs> really sounds like fun. How long you been flying, David? Well, I got my pilot's license when I was 16. And I've been up there ever since, flying through the clouds, exploring the skies. I feel like, I feel like I'm seeing a little bit of heaven. <laughs> well, my friend, Jonathan, would certainly agree with you. Oh, yeah? And does he fly? Oh, yeah. All the time. <laughs> oh, boy, this is a big airplane. I like that. I like big in an airplane. This is a big airplane. I like big. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mark. This isn't ours. No, uh, my friend's plane is right there on the other side. Well, this isn't our plane? Well, this is a nice big plane. I like 
that uh, there it is isn't she a beaut uh, no uh we gotta talk about this come on mark grab your parachute and let's fly yeah uh, I can't believe this has happened. All the Naval Academy needs is a birth certificate. But what do they receive, too? They get two different certificates with two different names. If I find the fool who did this, I'll personally break his neck. Can't be mad at anyone. Travis. Why not? Annie, somebody screwed things up. Now the Academy wants to see David's adoption papers. But we'll just send them the papers, OK? We're to blame for this, Travis, you and me. No one else. I knew it was wrong to keep this a secret. Now it's out. What are we gonna do? We're going to have to tell him. Yeah, I wish you'd told me at all. You had all that chili for lunch. I'm really sorry you got so sick. It's all right. Forget it. I, I should have waited for another time. I'll tell you what. Next week, I'll teach you how to do a barrel roll. Barrel? I'll call you, OK? OK. I'll see you later. Boss. If I ever make Angel, we're just going to pass on the wings, OK? Oh. Hi. I have a feeling Flash Gordon isn't going to make it to flight school. I mean, I have never seen anyone get as sick as he did today. We weren't in the air for two minutes, and he started barking. <laughs> Mom? Dad, is something wrong? Sit down, David. Your mother and I have something to tell you. David, we got a letter from the Naval Academy today, and uh, there's a problem with some of the paperwork. Oh, no. Am I being turned down? No, no, no. It's not that. It's just it's, uh, it's a question about your... Uh, your birth certificate, and, uh... <laughs> it's all my fault, David. I should have told you all about this a long time ago. A birth certificate, Dad, I don't know what you're talking about.
The Academy wants to see the final decree of my adoption? Is that what you both wanted to tell me? That you adopted me? For years we wanted to tell you, but it, it was just easier to put it off. Then uh, as you got older, it was even harder to face. David, we were just plain scared. That's the only excuse I can give you. I'm adopted? I'm sorry, David. We didn't tell you sooner. We're sorry. Yeah, I, uh... Uh... I have to be alone for a while, okay? about your uh, birth certificate. You adopted me? I'm sorry, David. We didn't tell you soon. We were just plain scared. I'm adopted. 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 Get a reading on his vitals. Commander. Commander! Commander! What's the matter with you? You, you better carry on without me. I'm not feeling very well. Excuse me, I'm Sergeant Major Hastings. My son David was in an accident. Uh, Sergeant Major Hastings? I'm Lieutenant Commander Pearson. I'm the doctor who'll be handling David's treatment. How bad is he hurt? Well, he's got a dislocated shoulder and some severe abrasions, but there are no internal injuries to speak of. He was complaining of some dizziness, but that all turned out to be negative. All in all, I say that your son was pretty lucky. Thank God. Mr. and Mrs. Hastings, when David was brought in, he was fairly incoherent, but he kept repeating the word adopted over and over again. It seemed to upset him every time he said it. Travis? Just heard about David. Is he all right? He's going to be OK, Mark. Mr. Smith, an hour ago, we told David that he was adopted. Needless to say, it was quite a shock to him. Doctor, can we see him now, please? Of course. Follow me. We're so sorry, David. So very, very sorry. We love you so much. I know. And I understand. I understand. Right here, Mr. Smith. Prayer or analysis? Neither. I just came in to offer you a friendly ear, that's all. Well, I'll keep.
keep that in mind. Thank you. Don't you think you've tried to go it alone long enough? Jonathan? Hey, David. Oh, hi. Hi, Mark. Yeah, I brought you these. Figured if you're gonna be grounded for a while, at least you could read about flying. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. No problem. So, uh, what's with the sweatsuit? You got a day off or something? Oh, don't I wish. I'm under orders from the colonel to meet her at the gym. We are gonna work on this. I'm not looking forward to it, I tell you. Feeling all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I've just been giving a lot of thought to my situation, you know, about being adopted and all. And I realize that there's two people out there somewhere who help create me. I mean, I don't even know who they are, what they're even like. I could have a brother or sister out there somewhere. It's really strange, Mark, but I want to find and meet these people. You think I'm wrong? It's your decision to make, Dave. What about Travis and Annie? How do they feel about it? I haven't told him yet. I mean, I love them, Mark. They're my parents. But I have to know who my real mother and father are. So I'll know who I am. Sometimes I just start crying, and I don't know why. But I can't stop it myself, either. Then there's the periods of depression. I just feel so bad that even the littlest thing, or even nothing, it just, it just sweeps over me. That's when I drink. It numbs the feeling, makes it a little easier to live with. Well, the nightmare is always the same. Yeah. I met a Navy pilot on my first tour in Vietnam. Lieutenant William Campbell. We were on a three-day R&R &R in Saigon, and we spent every minute together. There we were, in the middle of a war, thousands of miles away from home. We were kids, Jonathan, scared kids, who fell in love with each other. Well, I was the happiest girl on earth when he said we'd get married. But that never took place. Bill's jet was shot down over North Vietnam. And he's still listed as missing in action. That's how my nightmare always ends. With Bill's jet exploding. How long have you been having these dreams? Ever since I came home from Vietnam. Jonathan, I told you 
that I knew about post-traumatic stress disorder. And I got mad when you suspected that I might have it. Well, I've always known that what happened to me and what I saw over in Vietnam would stay with me forever. And that's why you always work in emergency care. So you can hide inside the same work you were doing in Vietnam and still pretend that a problem doesn't exist. Yeah, but you don't understand. I'm a nurse. I am trained to heal people. But you're also a human being, Kim. A human being with a lot of pain inside. It's just that I feel so alone. But you're not alone, Kim. There are a lot of women suffering from the same problem you are. Will you help me, Jonathan? You bet I will. Puppy for a spin, are you? <laughs> Mark. I guess my mind was at 30,000 feet. I haven't had a chance to get by and see David. How's he doing? Oh, he's he's fine. Getting stronger every day. And what about you, Amigo? How are you doing? Well, after everything that's happened, I guess I'm doing all right. <sighs> no, that's not true. The fact is, David told us he wants to find and meet his his birth parents. I can't believe how one stupid clerk somewhere has been able to cause all of this unnecessary grief. David was doing just fine. Just, just fine. <laughs> My God, Mark, he wants to meet his real parents. And that scares you? Yes, I'm scared. Wouldn't you be? What's it to be afraid of? You're missing the point. I mean, suppose these people turn out to be, I don't know, super rich or just more interesting than me and Annie. I mean, they're his real parents. Travis, listen to me. You and Annie have loved David for over 17 years. He knows he's your son. There isn't anyone or anything that's going to change that. I just wish I could be sure. Well, I am sure that you're not the first adoptive parents to feel this way. But you can't let your fear of the unknown stand in David's way. You just can't. I know, I know. Something else here you might want to think about. Yeah. What is that? If David is able to locate his birth parents. That'll give you and Annie a chance to say thank you. Because if it wasn't for them, buddy, you never would have had this great boy for your son. That really is the bottom line, isn't it? Come on, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. There, now that didn't hurt too bad, now did it? No, sir. This pretty much covers what you need to know. The main thing is to keep the wound as clean as possible, okay? And since you didn't cry, I hereby make you an official member of my Heroes Club. Congratulations. Look, Mommy, I'm a hero. <laughs> you sure are, honey. And she got a lollipop, too. Now, you be a careful girl now, OK? I will. Thanks for being so kind, Commander. You're welcome. Goodbye.
Daddy will be proud of me because I got this hero button. Huh? Oh, you bet he will be. Well, looks like you made her day, huh? To be honest with you, it's more the other way around. Oh, you're having a good day, then. Well, let's just say they're getting better. So what brings you down here? Well, they're forming a veterans outreach group over in Seabrook. They're all women suffering from PTSD. I think it'd be good for you. Sounds a little scary. I'd be lying to you if I said it wasn't scary. But I think it's what you need, Kim. Okay. Okay. Look, I'll let you know when I hear back from the director.